It has happened. Brexit. So what is Nexit? Hi everyone. First of all, I want to say if you hear any noise in my videos, it's because I live in the middle of New York City and there's a lot of noise outside. They're doing construction and my neighbor sometimes walks by. So you know where the noise is coming from. I'm going to talk about Brexit and the EU. Do you like the EU? I'm not so sure. I'm going to tell you why. First of all, I want to congratulate the British people for leaving and being able to decide for themselves what their future will hold. I think we could have an honest discussion about the EU, the European Union now, because it's been 20, 30 years, maybe even longer that this project has been going on. I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of different countries in Europe have issues. People are just confused and not sure what to do and what to think about the European Union. While the EU is continuing their projects and their step-by-step -step integration to one big union, with a central government, with a central European constitution, with an EU army, and so on. But do you even know who is representing you in the EU parliament? Most people I speak to in the Netherlands, they don't even know who is really representing them. Who can you hold accountable if something goes wrong? I heard that in the beginning of 2020, the EU constitution is the law that is overruling the national laws. So that means that even though a country has a law, if the EU law says something different, you have to listen to the EU law? Did people vote for that? Well, actually in 2005, the Dutch people were asked in a referendum if they want an EU constitution. Overwhelmingly, almost two thirds of people decided they did not want to be part of the EU with an EU constitution. I think people in Europe want to work together, but they want to keep their own identity and their own culture and their own laws. The way it's going now in Europe, or in the EU, is that all your rights are being moved to the central government and that's where all your decisions, everything is being uh, um, done there and you don't have much to say anymore in your local government. I personally think this project looks a little bit like the project that they did in World War II, what Hitler wanted, he wanted one big nation, but I think the people, if, if that's really the intention to do the same and have one big EU and one big nation, they have decided that doing it through war is not the right thing. So they do it slowly, step by step, so citizens don't realize what's happening until it's too late. And the British people stepped in and stopped it, I think just in time. We're at a very interesting moment in time now because it's now or never. If you want to leave, it's now the time. Europe wants to do something like what the USA did. The USA has 50 states and individually they have individual laws, but the one big federal law is what keeps it all together. But why does it work in the USA and not in Europe, in my opinion? That is because America has one flag. America is one nation under God. They all feel first and foremost American. So whatever happens, whatever the individual thought process is, they will always feel American and be proud of their country. In the EU, people feel that about their own country, about the Netherlands, about France, about Italy. And I think it's beautiful that all these different countries have different identities and different languages. Just everything is different. But if you want to try to act like it's one big country, that's not going to work. To have a working country, you have to have all the citizens feel the same and think the same, and that's not happening in Europe. In America, to put all these states together, it took so many years, so many decades, centuries to have them all in one place. And in the EU, they're doing, they want to do it in a pretty short amount of time. So I think if people and countries want to work together, it should come naturally, but it shouldn't come forced the way I feel it's being forced onto the people in Europe right now. And I think the reason why there's so much turmoil in France, for instance, over a year, the yellow vests have been protesting. And in the Netherlands, you have the farmers that have been protesting. And all over here, more and more people feel upset and not, not, not as safe as they used to be. It's because of this bigger project, the EU. I traveled a lot through Europe over the past 20, 30 years. And I love Europe, I love each country, I love the French and I love the British people, I love German people, all for their own unique 
things. And most of it, I think of food, of course. I love the French croissants and I, oh, I can talk for hours about that. But um, what I think is beautiful is that each country has their own love for their own country. Being proud of your heritage and being proud of your flag is not a bad thing. It's a good thing. Solidarity has avoided wars in the past. When people uh, help each other and have the same opinion and the same ideas about things, that's what keeps a country together. But if you're forcing people to be together that don't really feel the same way, that's gonna cause friction. So I think that's what we're seeing in the European Union. Just like Nigel Farage, the architect of Brexit, he said it in a really nice way. He said in his last speech, we love Europe, we just hate the European Union because it's not a democratic process. What was also interesting at this last speech was that he had the British flags uh, out and waving to the other European members. But did you know that just recently all the individual nations are not allowed to have their national flag on their desk? It all has to be European Union or the European Union flag. They even have an anthem. So you know where they're going. I mean, the European army, the European constitution is now implemented and the British people got out. So they are on their own and I think they're gonna do great. President Trump already said that they are going to work together for trade deals. Even though everybody has scared everybody like, oh, don't leave the European Union. It will be so bad for economy. Look at the economy in the European Union right now. Look at the individual states. How much money does it cost you? The taxes have gone up. Everything, quality of life has gone down. So please tell me what has gone better for you living in the European Union. I really want to know. It's just becoming more and more expensive for the people in the European Union. Taxes going up, this crazy climate deal. You have to pay for it. I think I heard something about 11,000 billion euros. It's like crazy. Where does this money come from? From your pocket. Uh, I kind of feel sorry for the European Union. I think it's time to have an honest conversation about if the EU is what, what the people in Europe want or maybe they want to be their own independent country. It's time now for the citizens to speak up because if you don't speak up and you don't do anything about it, those few people in charge in each country and in the parliament in the European Union will decide for you. And maybe that's not the best thing for you. I wanna wish the British people all the best after this Brexit. Congrats, congratulations. They don't want to just give up all their sovereign, I don't know what, sovereign states. So, Nexit is a great one, Frexit, Atalexit, I don't know what, Jexit, I don't know what the names are, but Ger Germanexit, Jexit, Nexit is easy because it's the Netherlands.